So in this video, we're going to talk about the matrix transfer method. Matrix transfer method. And this is a method uh, in optics, also sometimes known as the transfer matrix method. Um, it's, it's equivalent. Uh, basically, what this does is, let's say I've got a multi-layer structure. So I've got some refractive index here, refractive index here, Let's say I've just got this multi-layer structure and I apply some plane wave at the input. So some electric field uh, at, the, at the beginning, at this first layer. Then we know, well, I'm gonna get some reflection here. I'm gonna get some transmission and then I'm gonna get some reflection again and some transmission and then some reflection, reflection, transmission, and so on and so on. And if I want to calculate the total reflected wave, so I want to calculate the total reflectance of this structure, for example. Um, that's really hard to do. That's really hard. Uh, the math just gets pretty hopeless after you have, like it's doable for a single layer, but if you wanna try and do the geometric series math for multiple layers or for say 20 layers, um, this, this quickly gets impossible, just accounting for all the reflections, all the transmissions, and trying to sum up the total reflected wave. Um, it gets incredibly challenging. So the matrix transfer method basically splits this up into multiple problems. So it says, okay, well, four interfaces or three interfaces at the same time was super hard, so let's just do one at a time. And we're gonna do something kind of clever. So we're gonna say, well, uh, if this is some interface anywhere within our structure, it doesn't really matter where it is, uh, we know on the left-hand side, uh, or let's, let's call this uh, material, let's call this material zero and material one. Uh, so on, in material zero, we're gonna have some rightward traveling wave. That's gonna be in material zero, just so we can keep track of all these. And we're gonna have some leftward traveling wave. Let's call this uh, E0 traveling to the left. And these uh, electric fields, I'm assuming are right at the interface. So they're like zero distance away from it um, because we're just dealing with right now the interface. And then in material one, we're also gonna have some rightward traveling wave and some leftward traveling wave. Okay, I mean, I haven't said anything super controversial yet. Although your, your eyes might be screaming, like, why do we have this wave? Um, because usually when we apply some uh, plane wave that's coming in from the, from the left to the right, uh, we only have a, so we'll only have a transmitted wave, uh, a reflected wave, and that's in addition to the incident wave. Wh wh where does this extra, like, E from, I don't know, out, out, from the, out from the world come from. And that comes from the fact that in this, we're assuming this is an interface somewhere within our structure. So it might be this interface, for example. And in general, we're going to have electric fields propagating to the left because we're gonna get reflections off of this boundary. So we're trying to come up with a general way of relating the electric fields on the left and the electric fields on the right independent of where this interface is located. And so what we'd like to do is figure out a relationship between the fields on the left and the fields on the right. And if you've, uh, if you've guessed from the name of, from the title, uh, the, this relationship is gonna be in the form of a matrix. So the electric fields uh, on the left are in material one, uh, traveling to the left and traveling to the right, are equal to some matrix, uh, let's call it D to just be consistent with the literature, um, multiplied by E1 traveling to the right times E1 traveling to the left. Oh, that's <laughs> times E1 traveling to the left. And this matrix, which we're gonna call, uh, I'm gonna call this the transmission matrix. If we have this matrix, then we don't need to worry about the infinite reflections of this interface, because for no matter no matter what the outside world looks like, this is going to be the relationship between the fields on the left and the fields on the right. And so I will actually calculate out the full transmission matrix in the next video.
Um, but you might say, well, Jordan, that's great. We've, we've dealt with interfaces, but these structures have some finite length to them, right? Like each of these layers uh, has a dimension and we haven't, we haven't talked about that at all. Uh, and yeah, you're, you're exactly right. We need to take care of that. So let's say we've got uh, this layer. Uh, let's call it material one. We can do the same exact thing. We can say, well, on the left-hand side of material one, so when I say this, I mean like right up against the interface. So at X equals zero plus. Um, so just on the right-hand side of this interface. Um, and this, these are some other materials, N0 and N2, but we don't, we don't really care about those. Uh, we're not gonna worry about those because we only want the relationships for the inside. We've already dealt with the interfaces. So we know on the left-hand side, we're gonna have some field traveling to the right and some field traveling to the left. And again, these fields are going to be uh, they're, they're because we've got reflections inside the structure. We have to worry about all possible uh, fields. And then on the right hand side or near the very, uh, very right of this structure. So at X equals L minus uh, X equals L minus. We've also got some field traveling to the right and some field traveling to the left. And I'm going to call this one uh, A. I'm going to call this, this left-hand side 1A and this right-hand side 1B, um, but it really doesn't matter what you call it. It's just so I can actually write down an equation involving this stuff. And so we're going to do the same exact thing here. We're going to relate the fields on the left, so E1A traveling to the right and E1A traveling to the left, to the fields on the other side of this interface. And we're going to do that through this what's called the propagation matrix P, which is just, um, it's, it's very simple. I will calculate it in the next video. Um, but some propagation matrix times E1B traveling to the right, E1B traveling to the left. And so if we have these two, uh, these two relations, so this transmission matrix and this propagation matrix, um, then we can we can construct an entire transfer matrix for our overall multilayer structure. So what would have been hopelessly complicated in the beginning, so let's say N0, N1, N2, and N3, well, we can just break this apart now uh, because we know we've got waves on the right-hand side of this interface and on the left-hand side of this interface. So I'm going to call these... Uh, E3, uh, what did I say, A, um, traveling to the right, and E3A traveling to the left. And then we've got E2B traveling to the right, and E2B traveling to the left. And so we know the relationship between these two. We know that E2B traveling to the right, E1, E2B traveling to the left, is just equal to well, that's the transmission matrix, so D, D23. So it's the transmission matrix across this, uh, across this interface, which we just said, we just said this was the relationship. Um, and we don't know what it is yet, but it's, uh, it is a, a matrix uh, multiplied by E3A traveling to the right, E3A traveling to the left. And what, what I find most confusing about this is quite literally just the notation. Um, so if, if you get confused, I apologize. I've tried to simplify it as much as possible. Um, but the basic idea is these fields on the, left of, on the right of this interface and then on the left of this interface. And then we're going to do the same thing. So with, uh, with our propagation matrix. So now we've got E2A traveling to the right and E2A traveling to the left. And we have also a matrix relation for that. So E2A traveling to the right and E2A traveling to the left. That's just equal to the propagation matrix. I'm gonna call that propagation matrix two because you know, it's, I mean, it's layer two, that kind of makes sense. Um, times the electric fields, the relevant electric fields. So that would be E2B traveling to the right and E2B traveling to the left. And you see that this, uh, and we can keep doing this, but let's say we're just interested, let's say we're just interested in N1, N2, N3. So let's say we've just got a single layer structure, just 
uh, just to simplify things, um, we know on this last interface, we've got some electric field, uh, let's, this is 1B uh, traveling to the right, and some electric field traveling to the left. Then we can write out that matrix equation too. E1B traveling to the right and E1B traveling to the left. Well, what's, what's the relationship? Well, we've just got an interface. So it's just D12. Uh, so it's just the interface from material one to material two multiplied by E2A traveling to the right, E2A traveling to the left. And now the beauty of this is that we can combine all of these matrices together. So we can get a relationship between our input electric fields or what is often our input and what is often our output. So we can write out the full matrix equations basically just by plugging stuff in. So this guy, um, we, we've solved for, what, what is it? We can now just plug stuff in. So this can go here, uh, this can go here, and overall we've got what? Uh, let's say we're interested in E1B traveling to the right, E1B traveling to the left. That's just equal to, uh, well, uh, D12 multiplied by this vector, but that's just the same thing as this, uh, this system. So P2 multiplied by this vector, which again is the same thing as this. So D23 times e well the uh well, my my eraser doesn't appear to be working um the electric field traveling to the right and traveling to the left at our output and now this is where things get a lot less complicated um because this is just a matrix itself it's the multiplication of three matrices but it it itself is just a matrix and so we can write our, uh, I'm going to just call this E1B vector, is just equal to some matrix times E3A vector. And so this is our transfer matrix. And it was a little painful to get to it, but compared to the alternative, um, it, this was relatively painless. But you might say, Jordan, I don't care about what this transfer matrix. I want to know what happens when I shine a light on my structure. So I want to know what happens when I apply an electric field. I want to know how much gets reflected. And I want to know how much gets transmitted. I don't want to deal with this matrix shenanigans. And I'd say, okay, let's, let's figure out how to do that. Um, well, notice that this E in and E R are nothing but the fields that we all already solved for. Uh, so E1B traveling to the right and E1B traveling to the left. Well, we can just plug that straight in then to our, our matrix equation. So E in and E reflected is just equal to our transfer matrix. And what are these 3A and 3A? So let's N1, N2, and N3. Well, this E transmitted, this is the same exact thing as E3A traveling to the right. Well, so that's great. Um, so we've got our E transmitted, and I'm gonna call this trans and reflected, just not to confuse it with uh, rightward and leftward traveling waves. But what is the leftward traveling wave on this side? Well, did we, are we going to have one? Is that, does that physically make sense? Well, no, because this is the entirety of our structure, right? We need, we would need to send in some wave on the right hand side for us to get a leftward traveling wave. So this is actually zero. Um, and so if we want to solve for E reflected, uh, well, we can just write out uh, the matrix equation. So if we actually do the matrix multiplication. Uh, it's fairly easy because there's a zero here. So E in is just equal to M11 times E trans. And E reflected is just equal to M21 times E trans. And so from the first equation, we get our 
E trans over E in, which is just the total transmission of our structure. And that's just equal to one over M11. And we can plug that in here because now we've got a relationship between the reflected wave and the transmitted wave, and that's not what we want. We want the reflected wave and the input wave. So we can plug that in. So E reflected is equal to M21 times E transmitted, which we just said uh, was E in times one over M11, if you just multiply both sides by E in. And so E reflected is just equal to divided by E in, or the total reflection coefficient of our structure is just equal to M21 over M11. And that's it. That's the entirety of the matrix transfer method. It might seem a little magical, but I kind of just think of it like leapfrogging. Like we're taking the electric fields here, we're assuming that we know them, calculating them here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and then here. And magically, we've got a relationship between the input variables and our output variables. And we don't necessarily need to know all the reflections that are happening in between, because generally we're only interested in the amount that gets reflected and the amount that gets transmitted. And so to me, the matrix transfer method is kind of a magical way of doing really hard math. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.